Welcome back everyone. In my today's lesson, I will discuss about bronchomalacia and tracheomalacia. Tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia refer to chondromalacia of a central airway, leading to insufficient cartilage to maintain airway patency throughout the respiratory cycle. These are common causes of persistent wheezing in infancy. Tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia can be either primary or secondary. Primary tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia are often seen in premature infants, although most affected patients are born at term. Secondary tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia refer to the situation in which the central airway is compressed by an adjacent structure, for example, a vascular ring or deficient in cartilage because of tracheoesophageal fistula. Bronchomalacia is common following lung transplantation, assumed to be secondary to the loss of bronchial artery. Supply leading to ischemia of the bronchial cartilage. Laryngomalacia can accompany primary bronchomalacia or tracheomalacia. Involvement of the entire central airway, that means laryngotracheo bronchomalacia, is also seen. When we see the clinical manifestations of those conditions, primary tracheomalacia and the bronchomalacia are principal disorder of infancy with a male to female ratio of 2 to 1. The dominant finding low-pitched monophasic wheezing heard predominantly during expiration is most prominent over the central airways. Parents often describe persistent respiratory congestion even in the absence of viral respiratory infection. When the lesion involves only one main bronchus, uh, most of the time more commonly on the left, the wheezing is louder on that side and there might be unilateral palpable frameters. In case of tracheomalacia, the wheeze is loudest over the trachea. Hyperinflation and or subcostal traction do not occur unless the patient also has concomitant uh, other problems such as asthma, viral bronchiolites or other causes of peripheral airway obstruction. In the absence of asthma, patients with tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia are not helped by administration of bronchodilator. Acquired tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia are seen in association with vascular compression, vascular ringis, lingis, innominate artery compression or in association with the loss of bronchial artery supplying in lung transplantation. Tracheomalacia is the rule following correction of tracheoesophageal fistula. So most of those neonates who have a repair of tracheoesophageal fistula have tracheomalacia. Other causes of acquired tracheomalacia which might persist after surgical correction include cardiomegaly. Regarding diagnosis, Definitive diagnosis of tracheomalacia and bronchomalacia are established by flexible or rigid bronchoscope. Other important diagnostic modalities include MRI and the CT scanning. When we see the treatment of those two conditions, postural drainage can help with clearance of the secretion, and beta drainage agents should be avoided in the absence of uh, asthma or other strong indications because they can exacerbate loss of airway patency due to decreased airway tone. Nebulized ipratropium bromide may be useful. Endobronchial stents have been used in severely affected patients but have a high incidence of complications ranging from airway obstruction due to granulation tissue to erosion into adjacent vascular structures. Continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP via tracheostomy may be indicated for severe cases. A surgical approach, orthopexy or bronchopexy is rarely required and only for patients who have live treating apnea cyanosis, bradycardia, or cyanotic spells from airway obstruction and or who demonstrate vascular compression. Regarding prognosis, primary bronchomalacia and tracheomalacia have excellent prognosis because air flow improves as the child and as the airway grows. Patients with primary air, airway malacia usually take longer to recover from common respiratory infections such as bronchiolites or pneumonia. Wheezing at rest usually resolves by age 3 years. Prolonged bacterial bronchitis has been reported as a complication of bronchomalacia. Prognosis is in the case of secondary one and the acquired form is varies with the cause of that uh, problem. This is all about bronchomalacia and tracheomalacia. Thank you for watching.